Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Tuesday, the 20th day of December 2022. I hope you're safe and healthy today. I hope your family is safe and healthy. And the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field and the first responders who are out here every day trying to save lives. And those that pick up garbage for us to keep streets and sidewalks and parks and highways and buildings and stairwells clean and disease free. And those that make deliveries like food and water, like mail for our convenience. Double blessings on the many women that are out here every day, all year, trying to help rescue, deliver and recover the teenagers and the children who are the victims of child molestation and pedophilia. The victims also of pornography and child pornography. The victims also of human trafficking, sex, slavery, prostitution, and child prostitution. Double curses on the perpetrators of these things. Double curses on the profiteers of these things. Double curses on the perverts that create the market for this disgusting industry. Finally, blessings upon the home. There are nearly 600,000 men, women, and children who live on the streets of the United States, and they're mostly children. And millions around the world, mostly children, in the worst conditions. Blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. There's a game, basketball game, scheduled tonight at Madison Square Garden. The New York Knicks are scheduled to play the Golden State Warriors in Madison Square Garden tonight. The New York Knicks are riding a seven-game winning streak, the hottest team in the NBA right now. Uh, the Golden State Warriors are four and six in their last ten. Um, right now, Andrew Wiggins is out. Stephen Curry is out. Andrew Godala is out. Klay Thompson is day to day, and Jonathan Kaminga is probable uh, tonight for the knee issue. So we'll probably see Thompson and Kaminga. Uh, they just beat uh, Golden State Warriors, uh, just beat, I think it was two nights ago, they just handed uh, Toronto a loss, 126-110 with Jordan Poole dropping 43. Um, so right now, the Golden State Warriors, at this particular moment, are dangerous. They're dangerous because they can blow up at any time. You know, this is the thing. This is the benefit of having, they have continuity in the extreme. Put it this way, put it that way. They have continuity in the extreme. What do I mean by that? So continuity is when players have played together multiple years and they know each other, right? Because they played together. When I say in the extreme, though, with them, they've not only played together, they have won championships together. Okay, so Kevon Looney, Draymond Green, uh, Clay Thompson, Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole, I think he won his first one last year. He might have won the one when they had Durant with him. But they have won together. And then, of course, you know, Stephen Curry, Clay Thompson together, have played forever together. Andrew Wiggins, I think he won. This is his first one with them with last year. So they, they played together a minute for a minute. They know each other. They know how to win. Now, as far as tonight, with no Stephen Curry... And a day-to-day Clay Thompson. And they're going to have to start probably uh, either Moses Moody or Dante DiVincenzo at the small forward. Draymond Green, Kavon Looney. And uh, so with that crew, on, um, we should be able to handle this crew today. But as I said, this is the league. And at any given night, you can get Jordan Poole dropping 43 on you. And, and you might lose the game. So the Knicks have to be careful here. They have to come into this game. As Tom Thibodeau is always saying, every game is separate. Forget the last seven games. Forget the last game. Tonight we focus on this. Now, the thing about the continuity issue with Golden State is they're getting beat up now. And this is the time for the Knicks to take advantage. You know, they're like a wounded, they're like a wounded animal out on the plains, you know, in Africa. And you got the cheetah watching them, you know. Or the leopard. And we should play that le- leopard cheetah role and get them while they weak. Okay? This is the league. There's no pity in the league. You know, they look at the strong surviving the weak get eat. You know what I mean? That's how it is. 
So we need to take care of this business. We need to crush these boys tonight in Madison Square Garden. Now, but I wouldn't say Gordon State Warriors are finished. That's the thing what I mean with this continuity. If Stephen Curry can come back healthy, and they say it's going to be about a month, so that brings you to say like the mid to end of January. If Clay Thompson can get healthy, and Andrew Wiggins, what is his issue? Let me see now. Wiggins, I know he's out, but uh, groin. All right, so he's got a groin issue. Um, so he's out against the Knicks. So he just needs to rest. If they can get healthy, you know, about the All Star break, <laughs> they can be a problem. Okay, they could be a problem because because of the continuity factor. These all guys are very they're they're highly skilled. They know how to play. Uh, like a Stephen Curry and a Clay Thompson, these cats don't rely on you know athleticism for their success. It's high level of skill, particularly shooting, dribbling, defending. They they rely on those things. Andrew Wiggins has really become a different player since he came to minute from Minnesota and learned their system. So later on, they could be a problem. But tonight they could be a problem only if the Knicks don't take this seriously. And some people like to use the term, but they should win this easily. Or this is easy. I don't understand why people look at the NBA and think something's easy. There's nothing easy in the league. Okay? That's how cats get beat. By taking taking that attitude. Oh, this is easy. This ain't high school. This ain't college. This is the league. Okay? Like I said, they just beat Toronto the other night with, with Jordan Poole dropping 43. Okay? That could happen anytime. So the Knicks have to be ready to play today. Um, one thing that I'm very confident in in that regard is that I know certain players are not going to let them slack up. See, Julius Randle is playing out of his mind right now. He really is. He's, he's playing not only at an all-star level. In my view, he's playing at an all-NBA level. Okay? So, and I told you at the beginning of the season, some of y'all get it twisted. Some of y'all like to get it twisted. But I said in the beginning of the season, if the bottom falls out of the Knicks, okay, watch for trades to happen at the at the All-Star break or the trade deadline. You know, watch the trades to happen there. But if they're competitive, they're not going to make any moves. Okay, they're going to stick with what they got. And so right now, it's obvious they're going to stick with what they got. Okay, so Julius is not going nowhere. And he's playing it because he's playing at a very high level. And the thing that he's the reason, one of the reasons I feel this is different than two years ago is the players around him. He's not the man here. Okay. Brunson is. RJ is much more mature now. And he's not just, kind, you know, he's not just uh, acquiescing to Julius. So it's a different team. And then with all of that, Julius is now playing more in a team concept. Okay, and the basic things that mess him up is in his head. And one of the basic ones is getting rid of the basketball when you're getting double teamed. The thing is now, because you got four legitimate offensive threats plus a rebounding threat in Mitchell Robinson, a rim pressure threat in Mitchell Robinson, they can't always double team Julius Randle. So he's now learning to recognize that and he's recognizing when the double team is coming and getting rid of the basketball. And then, of course, I've always said, even when he was in New Orleans, even when he was in New Orleans, I said, if you get him one on one with some smaller guy, that guy's done because Julius Randle is is a load, you know, to try to handle on a low block situation. And so he's recognizing when he's getting that and he's taking advantage of it and he's getting rid of the basketball now. There are times, of course, during the course of every game where he doesn't get rid of basketball at, at the right time and he does lose it. But it's much less than it was even earlier this year or especially last year. He's doing a lot better now. So that is what helps the Knicks as a whole team elevate. OK, so he's not going nowhere. Um, as long as this is the way it is, we're going to be really good, really good. Uh, Brunt, but Brunt, so, but but I brought all that up to say he is one of those players that'll slack up. He's one of those players that'll come into a game thinking we're gonna take this. This is easy. And the thing is, Brunson, and especially Brunson and Grimes, they're not gonna come with that attitude. And they're not gonna have it. Okay, and I feel like this is one of the secrets to the seven wins in a row. Brunson comes every game like it's a new game, and he plays every game like it's his last game. 
You can't really say it about every, every player, but he does. He plays every game like it's the last game of his life. Okay, Grimes comes high tilt, high energy every game. So does Deuce McBride. Okay, and 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 now you got Mitchell Robinson with a chip on his shoulder. He started the season say, "Yeah, I got a nice contract, but I want to show him I'm worth the contract." And that's typical for a guy that signs his first, gets his first bag. But not only that, all of these rumors, you know, we need to trade him for Miles Turner, we need to trade him for Aiton, and all this BS that people like to throw out against the wall and see who clicks on it. That kind of stuff is motivating him, and he's coming out like an animal. And this is the thing: tonight, you see uh, the last game. Okay, this this just last game that the Knicks won. Um, they tried to go small on the Knicks. And in the past, that would give the Knicks trouble. When teams went small on us, it would give us trouble, okay? For various reasons. But they went, Pacers tried to go small on us. And the Knicks destroyed them, see? And so Tom said, he said to the game, I like that they went small on us because now we we know we have to we have to really dominate that when they go small on us because Tom don't like to go small. He'll do it if he has to. If you see the Randall Obi situation, but he don't like to do it. He'd rather have a dominant rebounding effort when the team goes small on him because even if you go small on the Knicks, they can still run with you. Mitchell Robinson get up and down the floor and he leads the charge. And of course, all of them get up and down the floor. So you go small on us, we're gonna hurt you. And, and right now, the, the Warriors, um, starting Kavan Looney. See, we expected the Warriors uh, to to be had by now to have James Weissman as the, you know, as the center, no pun intended, but as the centerpiece of their lineup at the five spot. We, they drafted James Weissman. I mean, that was going to be the next coming or whatever. But he has not done anything close, any close to what, you know, he definitely does not he definitely has not played to his draft pick. Okay, let's just put it. Let's put it conservatively. He has not played to his draft pick. Okay, he's been a bust in terms of his draft, the, the, where he was drafted and how he's playing. So, with that in mind, they go with Kavon Looney at, at the at the five. Draymond Green is always a small ball four. Okay, um, we got a chance. To, I, I'm I'm telling you right now, they're gonna have a problem with Mitchell Robinson tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they stick in them jump shots, they're gonna have a problem with Mitchell Robinson. Okay? He only thing that's gonna stop Mitch Rob from eating these boys alive tonight is the referees and they whistles. If they take him out the game, okay, it's different. Okay? But if they, see the other night, I, I don't know, y'all tell me in the comments, but this is the first time. That I saw the referees in the game come close to letting them play. I mean, they just let them play. There was a lot of physicality in that pace again. And they was letting them play. I mean, for the most part. If if they do that tonight, I don't know if it was because the referees got it talking to after that Portland game when the Knicks had when Portland got a gazillion free throws and Knicks had like half of that or less. No, I don't know what happened, but they let them play against Pacers. If they do that tonight, watch for Mitch Rob to have a huge game. Watch for Mitch Rob. Because Kevon Looney, I'm not saying he's no scrub. I mean, he's a champion. But he ain't Mitch Rob. So, I'm looking for Mitch Rob to, to, to eat every board tonight. So, we're going to see what happens here. But <clears throat> that that's what I'm saying. We got to crush these dudes. Why are they the wounded animal? They the gazelle out there in the Serengeti. We got to turn them jets on like them cheetahs do and get, get, that, get that meat. You know what I mean? So um, I'm thinking the Knicks should, should, should have a good night tonight. Um, the perimeter defense, and that's why I mentioned they're not slacking off because Brunson going to come to play. Grimes going to come to play. Deuce going to come to play. So that trio on the perimeter is going to stop dribble penetration for the most part. I mean, this is the league. People going to get by you, right? Look at Matherin the other night. Remember Matherin? I mean, daggone, man. I mean, but it's not that a lack of defense. Dude, it's just that good, okay? <laughs> and so this is the league, so you're going to get that. But for the most part, that perimeter, that front line of defense is going to be tight tonight. If that's the case, we should have a good night because that's going to open up things for Mitchell Robinson. It's going to have, you know, monster night. You know, so I, 
I'm very confident. Now, with regard to Julius and RJ, yeah. Julius, you never know what you're going to get, so we kind of hold our breath every night. If he comes with that same energy, we're going to be really good tonight. If not, you know, we can still win. We can still win. They've proven it. But if he comes with that, that injury we've been having for most of the seven-game win streak, we're going to be in good shape. And RJ is going to do what RJ has been doing. He's going to attack. He's going to attack the rim. He's going to get aggressive attacking the rim. And then, and then if they start blocking the bully ball, he's got options. He can shoot the jump shot. If that's falling, they in trouble. If it's not falling, he can swing the ball. And then you still got Brunson. You still got Julius. You still got, you know, Grimes. So RJ is going to do RJ. RJ puts a lot of pressure. People don't, you know, people are so busy hating RJ because he's not Ja. <laughs> but RJ puts a lot of pressure on the defense. He puts a lot of pressure on defense. That bully ball, and 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 they have to. They, if you notice, watch. They'll put. They'll form a wall, like people do against Giannis. They'll form a wall to try to stop him. Okay, um, we'll see what happens. I like our chances tonight. I like our chances. I, I like. I like how everything looks. It's looking too good. That's that's my. Sc I'm feared because it's looking too good. But we can't sleep on Golden State. We can't sleep on Golden State. I don't think they will. Like I said, Brunson, Grimes, Deuce. Mitch Rob, they're going to come to play today, okay? They're going to come to play. And I think RJ is too. See, this is the thing when I'm saying Julius is no longer the leader of the team. It's these, all these guys have matured from two years ago, and Julius is playing his role, okay? Um, so um, I think they're going to be in good shape. I, I like our chances today. I really do. Um, and So it's, it's a nationally televised game also, and the Knicks usually play good. Tom Thibodeau's teams in general usually play really good on national television. That's just, I don't know what it is about him in national television, but he gets him ready to play on national television. It's like he ain't going to get embarrassed on national TV. So uh, <laughs> they're going to come to play today. So I'm expecting that. So 7.30 tonight, the Knicks against the Warriors. Let's enjoy this game. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a good night from our Knicks. And let's enjoy it. We'll be back to talk about it. I think I'm going to be doing... I think I'm doing KOT with... I think I'm doing KOT with Jay Ellis and them tonight. I think I am. But um, it's not official yet. But I think I am. But anyway, we'll talk one way or the other. Y'all have a good day. Enjoy your Tuesday. Sure.